Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so I made a few joke videos about Warlord and Evil Dead, but I genuinely do believe that Warlord is actually overpowered in this game. So I'm going to go over my build. I'm going to go over uh, how I play Warlord and how I legitimately do have like a 99% win rate with Warlord. And even if they're like a fully kitted team, even if they're stealth and they, you know, split objectives, you can usually pull out the win fairly easy and you don't really have to think about it. Kind of like when you play Puppeteer, you have to think about a lot of different things. You have to, you know, dodge, you have to go and try and hit them with the electricity they're gonna dodge your electricity so you just kind of like sit around and wait for your cooldowns because that's the only way you do damage now now this is just pure raw damage it takes no skill uh you just spam and you get rewards like it's that easy so let's go over what i've got here so you'll notice i have nothing in this second row uh, you don't need elites. Elites are completely worthless with Henrietta because it's just not necessary. Like, your basic units are going to completely dump on them, and it's all you need. So this whole second row here, I don't even bother. Uh, and even stuff with the boss, I don't even have anything in the third tier because it's just, I don't know, it's just a waste of time. Like, half the time, I don't even reach a point where I have Henrietta, and when I do have Henrietta, I, they can't stop me. So let's go over the ability here, which I honestly forget to use all the time. Bad influence. When activated, this skill generates an aura around the demon player for a limited time that increases the power of surrounding evil units. It can only be activated when the demon player is in spirit form, but will continue to work if the demon player possesses another unit. Now, the only time that I really use this is if I remember, <laughs> and if they're surrounded by a bunch of basic units um, already in the open, then I'll just kind of buff them. But other than that, the only real good time to use it is when they're on one of the two objectives being the uh, the last page or the Kandarian dagger and you'll just buff all the portals around you while they're fighting them and then you're gonna hop into Henrietta and then everywhere you move is Henrietta it's gonna buff everything around you as well most of the time you don't even reach that point though so it doesn't really matter and of course it's just going to get better the more you level and honestly even warlord at level one felt really really strong so this is just kind of nice it's a nice cherry but like you don't really have to use the ability that often. All right, let's go over the top row here. So this is going to be hemophobia. Blood splatter increases the fear level of affected survivors. Super good, especially if you're spamming all the basic portals every time you fight them. Um, especially if you possess them, they get more health, they get more damage. You're going to be slapping them for like hundreds, 113s, 130s. Uh, and then every time they hit you, they're going to get blood splatter. Every time you hit them, there's going to be blood splatter. They're going to get a bunch of fear. Uh, and it just farms fear better than either of the other two demons. Um, this is just going to increase the range just so you can farm it a little easier. I maxed that out to three. Uh, this one is Mrs. Noby's quick comeback. I just have this to progress this uh, line here. Otherwise, it's not really necessary. Again, Henrietta is rarely in the picture, and if she is, I mean, she's really strong already. And this is also just getting more health on elite units. Again, I don't really use elite units with this build. So we're just going to use that to progress. And then we have easy access, which reduces the amount of infernal energy required to possess any evil unit. I like this because it's going to make it cheaper to get into your basic units. You're going to be able to just hop in there early. Once you find the survivors, you're going to be able to smack them for all those big hundred chunks and down them before they have any really good gear. Um, so super helpful with that. And we're going to just have heavy damage basic. It's going to increase the damage dealt by basic units. Again, we're using uh, and focusing on basic units. So we want their damage to be as high as possible. All this, unnecessary. Now we're going to talk about the puke portion here. Uh, so this is too gross out to run. Survivors hit by dead ice puke are tempor temporarily unable to sprint. This is super nice if you're having trouble uh, keeping up with some survivors. Some survivors will just run away uh, to avoid you when you're possessing stuff. This will prevent that and make it a little easier. Uh, and then we're also going to grab projectile vomit just to increase the range of the deadites puke otherwise it is kind of short so this helps when they're already sprinting from you and even if you're on top of them if you don't have this they can just run away from the puke and you'll get nothing out of it so i highly recommend taking this one so this is pretty self-explanatory it's a debuff they can't dodge for five seconds um super strong especially when you have some of these hunters with a lot of stamina and they can just spam dodges this maybe could be replaced with one of the end ones here but i do like having a lot of damage on the deadite puke I think it ticks for 24s. It's very strong. Uh, it's probably one of the strongest abilities of any of the demons, in my opinion. Um, so I just put a couple points into that. We grab Rock Steady Boss only to progress the tree a little bit. And we're going to get Health Racer Basic. Again, we're focusing on basics, so we're just going to use this to make them tankier. That way, when we grab our possession points, we place all the basics down. Uh, they're just going to be really, really troublesome to deal with. 
And then we'll get possession extension, which reduces the amount of infernal energy required to maintain possession of any evil unit, just so we can sit on them longer. We can run in, we can do a lot of damage. Even if we're staggered, we're going to be tanky. We're going to be able to sit in there, and we're not going to use that much uh, infernal energy, and we're going to be able to do a lot of damage before we're actually taken down. And then this also is just to make your basics have a lot more uh, health regen. And you'll see at the bottom there that elites at the first rank of this don't even get health regen, which is kind of what inspired me to just not focus on elites. But you'll see there that the basic units do get 10% on hits which is super powerful it's probably the most important part of the tree and i think it's the most important part of any demon's tree is the infernal energy perks so we have head start this isn't super necessary i wouldn't recommend maxing this on anybody just because you'll find a lot of infernal orbs as you're making your way to the survivors in the beginning and then we're going to grab test of time that increases the duration of objective events or survivors while the demon players inside the objectives uh, aura this is just to help slow down in case you're having trouble or they do make it to those first two objectives. Um, since it, it rarely happens, it, I only have one point in there. If you're finding that your games have a lot more uh, second objective time, then go ahead and put two in there. You can probably swap out one of these other ones here. Then we're going to grab Portal Authority Basic. That reduces the amount of infernal energy required to place a portal basic, which, of course, we're focusing on them. And then when we have it maxed out, we're going to spawn about three basics per portal, and you can swarm them with so many high damage units. Portal Elite, just to progress it a little further. Now, I just realized I can take this out, so let's go ahead and just throw that... Uh, where can we put that point? We're actually going to move that point over to this perk here, which is Gates of Hell Basic, and that's going to reduce the cooldown between placing portals basic, um, especially when you're on those main big objectives there with the dagger and the lost page. Uh, this is so nice because you're farming so much infernal energy when you're on those objectives and this just helps you keep the pressure applied a lot more down here at the bottom we have fear factor it reduces the required fear level before survivors become visible in demon vision so i like this just because i don't like to grab perks for demon vision while we're in game because it's just kind of a waste um, the only time I'd ever do that is if they're playing stealth and you absolutely need the help, then yeah, put points into demon vision. Um, but usually I don't even like putting traps down in the beginning. I just want to find them uh, ASAP and you can kind of pinpoint where they're going to be. And I'll explain that a little better once we're in the game. But this is just to help find them a little faster. And you want to find them as fast as possible because that's how you're going to keep the pressure applied. That makes or breaks your game. And if you can find them before they do anything, then, you know, that tips it way in the demon scale. And then we're going to look at Infernal Refill. I just put a couple in here, just again, because I don't always hit the uh, the big two objectives. But that just increases the energy generated when you're near the active objectives. We're going to get Infernal Revenue. You're going to get more from Infernal Orbs. This is helpful because a lot of times you'll find that it's a very early game-oriented demon. You're going to be setting up traps near the survivors early. You need to go and grab Infernal Orbs as your main income. Um, so this really helps with uh, not having to dip out of the area and go get those orbs. And then great capacity for evil, that just increases the amount of infernal energy you can accumulate. This is also really nice because when you do initially find the survivors in the beginning, you're going to have a lot more infernal energy to play with as opposed to just 250. And uh, it's probably one of my favorite things uh, about Warlord. Alright, so with that, let's hop right into the game. Alright, so step one... Um, Alright, so step one. This one's a little weird because this is going to be kind of a gamble. As you can see, both of the main objectives are in the middle and we're also in the middle. Usually it's the side that you're not closest to, but I have seen it where they do spawn behind me. But let's go ahead and just head south. This might be a slower game. They might actually get the three torn pages, which is fine if they do because you're strongest on the points anyway. But we're not going to waste any time putting traps down. Uh, if you really, really want to, you can start putting traps on loot boxes. And that gives you the most threat level um, in terms of trap placement. But other than that, I think the trees are kind of a waste of time. And I think just normal scare traps are kind of a waste of time uh, in the long run. Really, I just recommend going and rushing as fast as you can to where you think the survivors are. And just getting started placing traps near them. Because you're going to farm that threat level no matter what. Now let's see if we can find them quickly here. They might be even be doing stealth stuff. Ooh, this is foggy. I haven't seen it like this yet. That's kind of cool. And look at that. We found him at Terminal Station. And let's see if we can't farm a bunch of fear here. We got all four still. All right. Let's go ahead and place it here. And we're going to try to place them near where they're at. We want to try and place it on the way of where they're walking. Uh, looks like we don't have anything up there. So let's just go ahead and surround them. Rare loot box. There's a rare loot box here. 
We have an evil tree tramp. Uh, let's go ahead and place just everything around. And then we're going to grab traps first. I like grabbing traps because you just generate a lot more fear. And if you can possess them and deal damage using their characters, it's even better. Um, let's go ahead and set some more scare traps here. Oh my gosh. Oh, I missed one on the building. They just snuck right by it. So they just walked away from me. I, did, I was too busy uh, placing traps, but that's fine. We got enough uh, threat level that way. So here's traps two. Oh, we're too slow. Here's a loot box. Let's try to set up the trap before he grabs it. Nice. He's not even going to go for it? Oh my gosh. Well, there's lots of loot here. Sometimes you're just unlucky and you're not going to be able to place traps uh, in their path because, you know, they are in a set location. But as long as you put a bunch down, it's fine. So he's alone. Let's try to catch up to the majority of the group. That's where we want to be. Uh, let's go ahead and grab portal basics. Actually, you know what? We can also set up a bunch of traps here. And this guy's alone. And what you want to do, especially when you're playing Warlord, is try to focus the guy who's alone if there's someone who wants to play solo. Yep, he went back. So if we down him, he's gonna ha they're going to have to come back to save him. Let's puke on him. They did get the first map piece, so that's fine. See all that damage with the puke? It's so good. So now he can't dodge, and now we just start spamming lights. And they're going to have to come back. So here we're going to use the alternate portal. And you can use those as traps. I didn't used to use those um, when I first started, but they're actually so powerful. And we're going to go ahead and just start putting more into portal basics. And then I like to grab possession next, just so that we can buff our, uh, our basics even more when we possess them. Now this they're going to have to run through a whole trap gauntlet. So we'll just set this up in case they come back to loot. And a lot of the time you don't even need de uh, demon dash, which is so nice. Perfect. And then let's go ahead and... Oh, no. They got it before I could even get in. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and put another trap down. And then we can do a demon dash to generate a bunch of infernal energy here. And then let's go ahead and take over red here. That way there's one less person to save them on the ground. So we have him bleeding out. They did manage to save, but that's fine. Let's just go ahead and keep putting points into our basic portal. And we'll puke, apply a bunch of damage. We got all of them with that. Now these guys are being pretty smart. They're sticking together. Now they know what we're up to. That's fine. We're just going to grab another possession point. Now, if you have a smart player group like this, uh, you're probably not going to get as much value out of our shenanigans here. And honestly, all you have to do in this situation is just keep possessing stuff, keep trying to whittle them down, make them use their items, make them uh, waste a bunch of resources, you know, make them use their amulets, make them use their uh, colas. That's what you want them to do. We're just going to keep surrounding them with scare chests. They'll probably run into them again. Um, and then if you don't have enough infernal energy, just walk away, fly away, grab some more orbs. And let's see, we have a couple over there. It looks like they're going to be hopping into that truck. They do have one page, and that's fine. Now, and the cars are going to be outrunning you, and a lot of times it's just not worth possessing the cars. Uh, usually you want to do that preemptively, but sometimes it's just hard. There's multiple cars on a location. Uh, you can kick them out, and if you're lucky or... Now, if you do want to stop them from driving the car, you can try to... Uh, possess the vehicle while they're in an area near no other vehicles and try to drive it away But if they hit your car, you're just kind of out of a hundred uh, Infernal energy so a lot of times I just like to trail them And we're sitting on a lot of infernal energy here We can kind of guess where they're going or just keep trailing them and then surround them Now they're all full health you want to be keeping track of the health there uh, And kind of get an idea of how much pressure you need to be applying There's a second map piece we see that let's go all the way around we need to start putting some portals down. We need to put some more scare traps. Very good. And we can get another demon dash here. And portal basic. Now they're going to have weapons. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and possess one of the players. We have army of darkness ash. Ooh, we just got purged. Rough. The Purge is very, very strong. And that's the one downside with this is because we're playing basics. Uh, he's going to purge us very easily. 
But it's okay, because later once they get to the, uh, the bigger objectives, it's not going to matter when you're in your boss, because he can't purge you out of that. And again, we're just going to keep whittling them down. Try to get them to use a lot of resources. We're generating a lot of fear just by standing there. We're going to get more possession. And let's go ahead and start farming some more infernal energy. We have a couple of them pretty damaged, which is good. Never has my strength been greater. Let's try to figure out where they're going to be going. Oh, if they're near a tree, it's always good to hit them with the tree. Generates a lot of fear. Uh, we can see if we can't get someone to walk into this trap again. And spawn another little guy there. So we should be spawning three basics per basic portal now. And they're going to have uh, axes, which improves their damage even more, which is so good. Take a look at this. So while he's alone, let's go and get him. And we might actually be able to down this ash. Oh, he purged us, but that's fine. He still got downed. Let's go ahead and start grabbing boss points. We're going to need some more infernal energy. So now they have to all rush over here, waste some more time. And you know what? If we grab this guy, try to interrupt, just waste their time, do a lot of damage while they're in a compromised position. Oh, he's got his ability. Red's ability is so good for that. Go ahead and puke on them. And look at how much damage we stacked on them now. And now we're going to keep generating fear because they're hitting us. Big AoE. And now they're all clumped up. Let's do a demon dash to generate a whole bunch of fear and uh, infernal energy. And let's go ahead and start grabbing some more boss points. And you're just going to kind of keep doing this method here. We can leave him, start wailing on all of them. They did heal up a little bit, but that's fine. Oh, he tried to cleanse us, but we had a lot of energy. Let's go ahead and puke. And our AI will actually do a lot of work. Look at that. They have to fight so many things. Now, we're kind of low on infernal energy, so we can leave them for now. Let them use a bunch of items, make them use abilities, waste time. Because the longer we can keep them from getting that third torn page, the better. I just want to make note, like, it's not always about just, like, completely slamming them. Like, it is kind of fun to watch the survivors and see them pull off some pretty good stuff or maybe even uh, keep you uh, keep you at bay. And it's kind of fun to root for them, so make sure you're rooting for your survivor friends. Nice. Now let's go ahead and grab one of these, although I did grab that kind of at a bad time. I don't have very much infernal energy, but he's pretty close to being down. And, of course, I missed the <laughs> shoot. Let's just generate some more fear on them. And at this point, you know what? We're going to put some points into Infernal Energy. Warlord has a really good passive income on Infernal Energy when you hit max level on there. Now, it looks like they are probably heading to Nobi Cabin, which is right next to Dagger. The third objective is usually by one of the final objectives. So if you see one's close after their second page, um, it's usually a safe bet to just rush over to the closest objective point or a location next to that objective point. Um, because that's probably where they're going to be heading. And look at that. We see it there. Let's trap it. Let's go ahead and grab some more infernal energy. Nice. Uh, we can probably get another good demon dash here. Either one or two. The map. Two, not bad. Let's go ahead and get more infernal energy. Traps at the exits. And you know what? We can probably do some work in here. Oh, he did this cleanse. It's not enough, though. We're so tanky. Let's puke on him. Oh, we're staggered forever. Oh, my gosh. Oh, well, ticks of 25. We solve this. We can get this deer head trap. I love the deer head trap. Oh, we have a couple people who are really low. Let's go ahead and set that up there. You made me do it. 
It's just kind of the process. I really love Warlord's play style too. It's a lot of spamming. Very fun. So that guy, it looks like they don't have a lot of healing. Someone's activating traps. It's not really a good opportunity to uh, possess anything, so we're just going to... Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and possess. Ah, oh, dang. Use his ability. I was going to say we could probably get some possession on him, but all we did was waste some points. But they did hurt each other a little bit. Now, as they drive by, we can probably hit them with this car. Oh, my God. We actually knocked him out of the car. That's so good. I don't have enough infernal energy, though. Oh, wait. Here's a trap. There we go. Good job, boys. Now, I don't know where they're going or trying to drive to. Are they trying to get the pages first? I'm just going to set up some traps on these items. They're having a lot of trouble fighting our basic boys. All right. So now they're all at the car. Let's just figure out where they're trying to go. I don't know why they wouldn't go to the dagger since it's right there. They're probably going to pages then. Which is so odd, because Daggers was close by. Maybe they figure I have a lot of traps at Dagger, because that's where they just were. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, shoot. I just fell down. <laughs> that sucks. Try not to fall down. Alright, and now this is where we're going to shine big, big time. Just start spamming portals, and at this point... Get some more fear there. We can actually possess this guy. And we can start grabbing elite portals now. Grab him, because he's annoying. He's also very low, so they have to worry about knocking him down or taking a bunch of damage. We'll probably get knocked as him. There we go. And we can actually just keep annoying them. Knock him down. It's probably the biggest problem for us right now, so we'll just kind of focus him. Again, they're getting a lot of fear. He might use his ability to prevent this. Uh, it didn't quite work out for him. Oh, we didn't quite stop him, but that's fine. And let's go ahead and grab boss here. We want to try and get boss as powerful as we can before we start setting up uh, a boss encounter. Make sure to surround the area with traps still. Let's we'll spawn an elite. You can possess the tree again. It's off cooldown. Very nice. And they're in a very, very sticky situation. Let's go ahead and hop on Henrietta now. Let's do a body slam. Body slam is very good. And we can fart on him. This guy's low. That's two. Let's do a little bit of a motorboat, too. And we have another body slam queued up. That's two knocked down. He got him up, but one's low. That's two knocked down right there. And I think this is going to be game. There we go. Good game. Okay, Big booty in the page. So a lot of that is just kind of like general demon tips, but mostly with that build, you're spamming basic portals, you're spamming traps around them. It's the most straightforward demon in my opinion. Um, it's definitely the most fun because it's kind of mindless. I don't really think about anything. I just spam left click and, you know, sometimes you do your uh, your boss. And again, I didn't. I forgot about my ability, which, you know, is, is obviously good to not forget about your main ability because um, it does boost all of your uh, your units pretty good so do better than me <laughs> use your ability you'll probably have less trouble there like when they were all surrounded with basics I probably could have buffed them all and they would have been even more troublesome but you know it still works out that's what I'm saying you don't have to think about anything you don't really have to try that hard uh, it's really really fun for that plus you're doing belly flops and you're doing big farts and stuff like that but anyway I hope this helps I hope you like the build when you try it out um, 
Maybe I'll play around with like an elite build or like a straight up boss damage build at some point. But for now, this seems like it's going to be the best build for Warlord in general. And then I'm going to try to do a guide for Puppeteer, which I just maxed out. And it took me a while to figure that one out. So um, I'm excited to share my, my thoughts and findings on Puppeteer as well. But I hope this helped. If you have any questions on Demon gameplay, go ahead and drop it in the comments. I'll try to help you best to my ability. Hit that subscribe button. I'm going to do more Evil Dead stuff. I also play Dead by Daylight in a bunch of miscellaneous games. And with that, I will see you in the next one. Peace out.